Hello everybody. Today's elevator parts project is all about CE elevator indicators. Let's go ahead and get started. So CE displays are actually very common. In fact, you've probably seen one or more variants of a CE indicator. They're commonly found on more modern elevators and modernizations. In fact, you're actually looking at four of them right now. This panel right here has four smaller CE displays behind these little panels. And I have one more up here which is probably a more common style that you've seen. And this is a brand new ThyssenKrupp display. So if I pull the indicator down, you can see here the indicator consists of two arrows and two displays. If I turn it to the back, here's the circuit board. And the main thing we're gonna be looking at are the inputs. Over here on the side, you'll see here, microcom only, COM24 and data. So standing alone, this indicator is pretty useless. You really can't get it to do anything. And that's because it uses only three wires to get its data from a controller. So I actually have acquired a CE Microcom controller and it's not here right now, but I wanna make it do something. I've got these five displays. I figured why don't we make it into something cool? So you might be wondering, what is this project going to be? So obviously I want to run these five displays. So unfortunately, since I only have one Microcom, every single display will display the same number. If I wanted to do different numbers, I'd have to have four separate controllers. So I only have one, so that's unfortunate. That one's gonna sit all the way on that top shelf, and then these are gonna sit here. As for the controller, I have this power supply, which is currently hooked up to the Otis touch panel. However, there's also a 120 volt plug on the back that we can toggle with this switch. So because I had to build this little shelf, there is this gap right here, which is the perfect space to put the controller. So the controller will go back here and I can hook up the power to this supply and use this switch to turn it on and off. Now as for controlling the floor, so what's going to be displayed on here, that's gonna be done with a microcontroller. So I'm thinking a little IR receiver remote control. We'll use the same remote as all my other parts and we'll be able to do all kinds of different modes with it. At that point, what modes it does is all about how I program it. So let's head on into the workshop and take a look at the controller. So here is my driver board and conveniently, we've got this little box that says CE system on it. And I can pull off this cover just by lifting this off. So inside here, you can see the circuit board and it's very small compared to the box. And then some modern controllers like the TAC32T, this board will already be put into the controller so it doesn't have this extra box. This would be like something that if you needed to add this onto the controller, this would be the housing for it. So just looking at the controller here, this here is the 110 AC input. So this is what we'll power it with. There's a transformer on it. Over here is the output. So this is the output for one, two, and three for the data, positive and negative. There's a few different modes right here that you can change. And then down here is the input along with these little resistors. So this is the little page that comes with it that tells you about the controller and, and the inputs. We're mainly focused on this system here. This is the input and how it works. So according to this, the signal voltage input is 24 to 48 volts DC. And the way that that's determined is by these resistors. You'll also see here we have A1 through 5 as for the input lines and then the up and down arrows right here. And if you look on here, you'll see 1 through 8 down, up, and then the commons. So this is a list of all the floors that this particular unit can display. So I can only do P1, P2, L through 18. Can't go any higher, can't go any lower. And that's because the memory of the chip is pre-programmed from the factory. If anybody here knows somebody or has the ability to reprogram these displays to display different numbers, send me an email because I would definitely like to kind of redesign the system and take full use of all these empty displays so that we could use this for display purposes. So as I said before, I want to use an Arduino to control this input here. And if you saw before, the input voltage is 24 to 48 volts DC. And that was determined by these resistor values. And if you look closely, I can actually pull out these resistors because they're interchangeable. So you could put a different resistor in here, which would allow you to use a different input voltage. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna modify these resistors. So I'm gonna switch these out with lower resistors so that I can use five volts from an Arduino to toggle this display. So I'll be using an Arduino Nano for this. This will sit somewhere in here. I don't know if any of these holes will line up. If they do, I'll use that. If not, I'll figure something else out. I'll put the IR receiver out the top and that'll go out to wherever I decide to put it. 
Then I'll need a power supply so I can run the Arduino. So the 120 will also power a 120 to 5 volt adapter I'll put in here, and then that will power this board. That's in the mail right now, so for now I'll have to do some testing until I get that. So once this part's all wired, the only last thing to do is to hook up the three wires. And here's one of the displays right here. This is one of the smaller ones. Uses the three wires, so I'm just going to connect three wires all to the four displays in that one panel, and then up the side to the Tissen display. And then the only other thing is just to program it. And the programming is gonna be where all the functionality happens, so I have to take the input from the remote, and what exactly happens is up to me. I definitely plan on implementing a simulator. I'm also thinking about doing an increment decrement system so you can manually make it go up or down a floor. I might have it where you can turn it off. I'm not really sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but we're gonna get started, and we'll see what happens. So as an example of how this works, so I've got this small display hooked up and my 120 going into the input, or the power input. I'm gonna plug it in. And you'll see here the display comes on, it says OK, and now it just says ZZ, which I guess it's sleeping. It's not doing anything. I'm not totally sure if that's pre-programmed in the memory or not, but this is what it does when it has no input right now. And on the input, the R1 here broke off, so I'm going to have to re-solder another resistor onto that, which kind of stinks. But I've put my smaller resistor in here, and I'll make this look a bit nicer later. And if I tap the, the line that this is connected to, you'll see there it switches to P2, which on our chart is 1, 0, which makes sense. I put it on 2, and that's 1, 0 in binary, so it shows up as P2. And since these use the same three wires, hooking up another display is as simple as unplugging the other one and plugging in a new one. So this is a brand new ThyssenKrupp indicator. So of course this thing's probably been tested, but we're gonna do a first time firing up of this display. Here we go. And just like it should, it shows ZZ. So great, this system works, uh, and it definitely works on the five volts. So I'm gonna get this thing set up and then we'll do a test on the displays. So let's go ahead and test the up arrow. There it goes. Now the down arrow. Here's one, there's P1, P2, lobby, two, and you get the idea. We can go all the way up to there's 15, and there is off. If we do like 11000, it turns off. And that actually gives us the ability to, to turn it off. If we want to turn the display off, we can do that. Controller is mounted to the board here and this space will be used for the power inverter which I'll be getting later. Next I need to implement a IR receiver out of the top so I'll just hook that up to one of these other pins here. So right now I'm printing a quick part that looks like this and this is actually going to be the holder that holds the IR receiver. And the plan is to mount that right in here somewhere so that you can point the remote down at this box and that will actually take the input. I'm also printing one more part. That's going to be a little holder for a small buzzer. And this is important because when you're sending an input to the controller, you need some way to know that your input's been received. Because sometimes the remote control messes up and it doesn't receive the input right away. And this part is simply just going to hold the little buzzer and allow me to screw it down onto that wooden mounting piece I made. All right, so the microcontroller is set up. We've got the inputs here coming off of the respective ports. We've got the IR receiver input here so we can communicate with this, and the little buzzer, which we'll use to indicate that something has been pressed. At this point, like I said before, we just have to wait for my power adapter to sit here. Plenty of room for that. Gotta get some wires for down here so I can hook it up to the power. And then just hook up all of the indicators 
So here is the panel with the four displays, and I've never really shown this in detail before, but this is just a monitor call station, a very large one. This was a brand new piece that never got used, and uh, someone from Monitor messaged me and said, hey, do you want this? So I have one of these, and then there's one of these down at the elevator museum as well. They're just basic monitor fixtures with the arrow, and while I'm inside here, I'm also going to wire this up as well, but not gonna make a separate video on that, mainly because this is just monitor, and I've made a video on monitor in the past. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up a nine volt battery into these, just have that as its own circuit, so this will always be wired up and ready to go as well. So here's the inside, and conveniently, the person who uh, actually sent this to me pre-wired it for me, which is nice. I'm pretty sure they set it up for 24 volts, so we're gonna change it down to nine. And then up here, we've got all the wires actually pre-set up for the microcom, which is awesome. So it also looks like they have one, two, three on here as well, so the color won't really matter as much. So that makes this really nice. And also while I'm at it, this here is another CE display. However, this one's actually broken. You see here it's missing a component. And on the back here, there's this little speaker module here. And this is actually the floor passing chime. And this particular indicator uh, has it, but the ThyssenKrupp one does not have the port for this. So I'm just gonna kind of rip that off here, and we're gonna install it into one of these displays. And it doesn't matter which one, because they're all just gonna do the same thing. But this will allow us to have a little bit of chime in the, uh, in the panel. So I'm just gonna remount this, like, right here. So this first panel is done. And you can see here the buttons light up, and the three wires for the indicators are sticking out the back. So at this point, the only thing that's really left to do hardware-wise is just to hook up the three outputs here to all the displays, which will be easy enough. I want to now focus on the programming of the microcontroller so that we can do some tests on the hardware and make sure it all works. So I've spent the last couple of hours programming, and after doing some thorough testing with the serial monitor, I think it's time to hook this up to the indicator and see what happens. All right, it's time to test. So I've got the Arduino powered, an external source, which again will be the, uh, the power supply here in a bit. Let's go ahead and power on the indicator. So we got OK, and we're going to sleep. So we don't have any data actually coming in on the, uh, the port yet, so I might need to adjust the code so that defaults to lobby, but I can hit this to make it go to the lobby. We have the different modes so far, and so far it looks like everything is working as it should. And at this point, it's just a matter, I'll do that bug fix on the code, and then just hook up all the displays. And now the system is installed and ready to be used. And you may not even notice that it's here. That's because everything's kind of hiding in the back. There's the ThyssenKrupp display. And I left the original packaging on there because I think that looks cool. I may take it off in the later dates. Here's the four displays down here on the monitor panel. And again, the call button does work, though it does not interface with the system at all. It just lights up and looks cool. And underneath here is the controller, so it hides in this area. The power supply is on. And this is the power supply that is currently running the Otis Touch panel. However, this switch here powers on the CE stuff. So it goes to the initialization. But here you can see we have four L's and another L. So all of these are connected together and they're ready to be used. Mounted the IR receiver up here on top of the power supply. Now for this particular project, there's a bunch of different features that we can do. First being the power button, and that simply turns the display on and off. And you may also notice that there is the beep, and I hooked the beep into one of these displays, and I did show that earlier. So every time the floor changes, you'll see here that it beeps. And that brings us to the next feature, which is the plus and minus. And that simply takes it down one floor or goes up one floor. So you can cycle through all of the different floors. You can see, well, that one's going. So it's that one. So 18 is the highest. And then the 
P1 is the lowest. Now that brings me to the next thing, so let's say it's down here at P1. This back button here will return the cars to the lobby, and it does the simulator, so it will simulate going back to the lobby. So again, if I bring it down one floor, you'll see that this is the arrow up there. It looks pretty cool. And the next is the floor entry mode, so that's what the numbers are for. So you can send it to a floor for the simulator. So you can hit like 12. Now let's say you don't want to go there. You can hit C. And you'll hear it does two chirps. So the little chirp tells you that, hey, your input has been accepted. So you can hear every time I push a button, it chirps. And then pushing C clears it. To go to the basement, you hit zero and then the floor you want. And then every other floor is just typing the floor. Now let's say you decide to input a value that's not valid, like 36. Now to make it go, you hit this play button here, but since 36 is not a valid display on this controller, it won't let you go there. So let's do uh, let's do five. So if I hit five and then go, you'll see that it simulates going up to five. And we'll go ahead and do 18 now. And here it is up at 18. So that's pretty much right now all the features that this has. I definitely think this looks cool. And what's kind of neat now is if I get any other CE displays, I just have to tap into the uh, three wires that are back behind here, set the display up somewhere, and we've got another display for the system. So I'm super happy with the way this came out, and I'm glad I could finally utilize these indicators on this panel, along with this brand new one that I got recently and it adds a new neat feature to the display. And also, it works well that it ties in with the Otis panel, so everything can just be plugged in with one wire and I don't have to have 100 wires coming out of this thing. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this project. This was a lot of fun and I'm, again, super happy with how this came out. These are really cool and I'm glad that I have this system working. It definitely adds kind of a fun little interactive part to the display. So thank you for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.